So this, uh, this video uh, is um, uh, a really nice, fast way to refresh uh, your knowledge of that area. So if you're an older person like myself, uh, you've heard this topic all your life, probably you're slightly tired of it. Um, but if you're a younger person, you know, you might want a little catching up on the whole history of this area. And, uh, and this video is a really fast way to do it. So uh, I don't want it to cut into my time too much, so I was going to um, just point to it quickly as it goes by. So if you could go ahead and hit play. So you can see it kind of is going to zoom in. We're down here at 1450 BC. And here's the Kingdom of Egypt. We're all familiar with that. King Tut, pyramids, all kinds of great stuff. And now here comes the Hittites in there. They don't quite make it down to Egypt. they got a big chunk up here. And then here's the Kingdom of Israel, way back in like 800 BC or so. Doesn't really get too much, but it's bigger than modern day Israel. Uh, here we've got uh, the Assyrians come in. They, Israel holds out for a little while, but uh, pretty soon it's going to be gone. Here comes the Babylonians <laughs> sweeping across. Babylonians take over a lot of space. And then the Persians. Now the Iranians, a lot of Iranians still call themselves Persians. You can see they got quite a big chunk of land. Now we've got the big sweep of the Macedonian Empire. Honestly, I didn't know the Macedonians had an empire until I saw this video, but anyhow. The Romans, we all know about the Roman Empire. They got the entire sweep of the Mediterranean, the Holy Lands, all that. And uh, then the uh, Byzantine, after the Romans kind of started falling apart a little bit. And then, wham, here comes the Sassanids, another empire that I honestly had never heard of. But hey, go Sassanids. But now we all know about the Caliphate. This is where the Muslims came all the way up into Spain. They took over all of Spain. And there's still... Um, uh, mosques and things in, in southern Spain today, quite impressive that the Catholics took over afterwards. And now here we've got uh, kind of a bad period, the Crusader Kingdoms, that was not a pretty thing. You know, the Europeans came over and killed lots of people. Uh, now we've got Saladin's empire. Can't say as I knew Saladin, but apparently he got quite a bit chunk, chunk of territory there. Uh, and now, yes, it's the Mongols. They, they sweep across the steppe. They don't get down into the Holy Land, but they're pretty, pretty successful. And of course, we're all familiar with the Ottoman Empire. They took uh, a huge amount of territory, and uh, finally we're swept away by European <laughs> colonialism. Europe finally gets its legs under it, sends out ships, takes over lots of countries, and then they establish the states. The Europeans decide on all these states. This area, both Israel and Jordan, is the old British mandate. Part of it was given to the Jews, and you can see it's kind of a funky shape. I talked to a guy who was there, and then they were attacked and they took over some more land. A guy said they drew those lines because that's where the Jews were living. This guy was at the UN meeting. But Jordan got this other two-thirds. So this was the original British mandate. Jordan was founded in 1946, Israel in 1948. Uh, France got these two countries. Britain had these two, France had these two, and they kind of divided it all up. And now it's gonna zip through. We can ignore the, it's got a fast replay. Everything that happened, wham, whoo, whoosh, lots of blood. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, so maybe we can switch to the slides. So I wanted to talk about um, the, the, um, the, the question, it's an old question, like, there's a problem since 1948, since the State of Israel was founded in response to all the Jews being murdered in Europe, the Europeans felt kind of guilty, and since they owned this big chunk of land down where the Jews said they were originally from, they said, hey, why don't you all go down there and hang out? And uh, that'll be just great. And uh, so they did, and uh, you can see, oh, this is all pretty intuitive interface. Okay, so lots of nations have owned this area. No one really owns it from a legal point of view. Um, the Jewish Palestinians, which are generally called Israelis, uh, they pretty much don't have any place to go. It's like those of us here in North America, we're Europeans, but here we are in North America, and guess what, there were people here before us. And, uh, but, and when I first found out about that, when I was a child being raised in California, I felt just terrible. Like, oh my god, I've got to go back somewhere else, the Indians can have this territory. And I'm like, oh wait, where would I go? So this is the problem that the, uh, the, non, you know, the Jewish Palestinians have in Israel. Is many of them have been there for eight and nine generations, so they don't really have any other place to go. Also, you know, it tends to be a problem when the Jews are somewhere else. People decide to murder them to take all their, you know, to make them an economic scapegoat or whatever. So it's a little dangerous for Jews in other places. And here's my disclaimer. I'm of Jewish ancestry, and I do have a low-level fear that at some point the government of any nation other than Jew uh, Israel will decide that I'm not a prisoner anymore and come kill me and take my stuff. Um, you could say that's kind of paranoid, but all the Jews who aren't paranoid are dead. <laughs> so, um, you know, those of us you know, that are around, we have this, like, I have this low-level fear that I... Kind of got to watch the news. Uh, so anyhow, so there's this problem. So the, there's the Jewish Palestinians, then there's the non-Jewish Palestinians, and a lot of them were forced out inappropriately, uh, and they need some compensation. Um, but I just wanted to point out that this is pretty new in human history. Usually the conquered peoples are massacred, you know, or whatever. They don't usually stick around too long. So, uh, so the question is, for this group, you know, why care? I mean, it's really far away. And I have some isolationist friends down in California where I'm from who say, you know, it's far away. 
like let it go. Uh, but um, one idea I didn't put in here is I have like one idea of like building airports so that anybody who doesn't like it there could just come to North America. And uh, I figure all the women would leave the Middle East pretty quickly, and the guys would be like, hmm, maybe we need to do something different. So, because um, <laughs> we know the North American guys are the best guys, and uh, that's how it is. All the women come here. Well, anyhow, it's a festering wound. It's contributing to hate of the West, this, this unresolved problem between the uh, Jews and the non-Jews in Palestine. Um, there's the principle of it, which is all people should really have a chance to live in security, right, and with a good life. I mean, that's like something we all like to have for ourselves, so the golden rule dictates that we want to have it for everybody else. Uh, there's, I personally, of course, have security, a concern for the security of Israel. If this problem there is not resolved, eventually the Arabs, uh, since they more or less enslave their women and don't give them any option in life but to reproduce uh, massively, will overrun the Jews there, who are all former Western Europeans and don't have so many children. So there's a problem where eventually Israel would just be overrun. Israel does have, and has had all of its life, uh, superior firepower, but doesn't want to really just massacre a bunch of people because they have this Western thing about not killing other people so much, although they have been driven to it in some cases because they're getting shot at all the time. Uh, so, and there's also, you want to have concern for the well-being of the Palestinian people who right now apparently have no hope for a better life and are thinking it might be a better idea to strap bombs to themselves and go blow up pizzerias and airplanes. I mean, that's, that's not good. They need a sustainable free nation. So, um, I got a little side here on the goals and the means to the end. Um, the goal is to have two sovereign states uh, that would live in peace together. Um, there's a problem that anybody who follows this uh, topic closely, or even not so close, is that the fundamentalist Muslims, a lot of them don't appear to be interested in really a rational dialogue on this. It's like, kill, death to the West, you know, death, death to the Zionist entity and stuff. So there's a certain fraction of that population that will never be persuaded. But I gotta figure that most Muslims are normal people like you and me and would rather live in peace and raise their children and have jobs and all that. So there's this little problem of the fundamentalist Muslims who, who tend to assassinate people they don't like. And so it's kind of hard to speak out and I'm just so encouraged and amazed and boggled by the, the rank and file of the Middle East right now rising up and, and uh, throwing off the shackles of uh, dictators. And uh, so I have some hope that there's a whole lot of reasonable people over there that, that could make peace. And then the fundamentalist Jews, there's this little clutch of Jews who apparently uh, don't believe that Israel should have been founded until after the Messiah came back. And uh, apparently they don't believe he's come, right? Since they're Jews and not Christians. So uh, they uh, don't serve in the army. They don't think Israel should exist. So these two are kind of like wild cards. These are, these are problems. Most of the world is pro having two sovereign states down there, but we're a little tired of sending money and guys over to make it happen. And so the hope is that if they could get some kind of a, a, a ceasefire for long enough to become interdependent, that uh, actual peace could follow. So this is my idea. Here's the map as it exists today. You got Jordan, which if you'll recall, got two thirds of the British Man. <coughs> this whole outline here, these two things were all owned by Britain. And Britain gave a big chunk to Jordan and uh, because they wanted to protect their trade route to their colonies in India. And they made friends with the Hashemite king here. And then they gave this chunk to Israel, a little bit less than this. And then when Israel was attacked by all these other nations, Israel took a bit more. And just this little tiny bit is left over for the Palestinians, okay? So here's my idea, is that uh, Jordan would give some land back, proportional to what it got. Egypt would give this little strip of land right at the top here of the Sinai Peninsula, which they just recently got returned from, uh, you know, the peace deal that they brokered, that Israel, you know, they don't shoot at Israel, Israel gives them back all the Sinai with all the oil, and uh, they're all happy. So they, but they would give this little strip back to the Palestinians so that they could at least have a train route to get down here to the Gulf of Aqaba. And from there, they could get to this eastern, you know, southeastern Palestine that Jordan would give them, and they, Jordan would also give them enough for a train route to get up here to the West Bank. So the Palestinians could finally have a territory that was contiguous, and they wouldn't have to have any checkpoints to get from one, you know, to get from Gaza to Palestine. Now, of course, right now, if you follow the news, you know that Gaza is run by uh, a different Palestinian organization than the West Bank. But um, I gotta hope that if all these people could get together, they, they could form a unanimous government. They might or not, might, or might not. Uh, just to let you know, I did send us this suggestion to Jordan, and I got a really nice letter back from the on, on Royal Stationery in Boston Gold saying my suggestion would be given all the consideration it was due. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyhow, here's just the essential elements of it. Uh, Egypt, Egypt's got a little contribution. Oops, sorry. Egypt's got a little contribution. Jordan's two-thirds contribution, because Jordan got about twice as much land. Um, and then the idea would be that it would be all contiguous and uh, no checkpoints within the uh, territory. And it would give the Palestinians a way to get to the Gulf of Aqaba? Okay, sorry. All right, so 
Here's a few other ideas. Uh, there's the serious games. These people are quite good. They're helping people see the other person's side. Uh, storytelling to engender empathy. Amnesia gas, that's my brother's joke. Facebook nations, that would uh, help um, you know, people collaborate from a lower level instead of from governments. Uh, here's a picture of the serious games. I was going to ask you for your ideas and some recommended meeting. And yeah. Okay. <laughs>